what is up everyone on YouTube? In this episode of the best Hearthstone cards, I will be talking about the best common or the best neutral epic cards. Um, and I will not do them in any of the hero classes because I've already talked about those briefly in um, the specific hero class videos. Alright, so let's get started. I don't think I have any epics that are this small. I'll start. I'll talk about the ones that I have, and then the ones that I don't have. It looks like the smallest one I have is the Big Game Hunter. The Big Game Hunter is very good. I um, it's hard crafting epics because they cost 400 dust to craft, and I know a lot of people that are on a budget or that don't really play as much don't have 400 dust. So I don't know. I would say only craft epics that you plan on using immediately. <laughs> Unless you're like loaded with dust. That's my opinion. Um, I happen to get him in a pack. He is very, very useful. For obvious reason, he takes out Ragnaros, takes out all kinds of really heavy late game stuff. And I. Okay, so I've learned of a recent play you can play with the Big Game Hunter that beats Handlocks because, you know, Handlocks will play the Giants and they'll have either 8 or 9 attack. Well, if you're playing Rogue, you can have Shadow Step, you can play the Big Game Hunter kill one giant, shadow step it, play it again, kill a second giant, and shoot, if you have another shadow step, you can kill a third giant, all with one big game hunter. So that's a that's a cool strategy that I recently learned. Um, this video might go pretty quick. I don't have too many epics. Faceless Manipulator, this card is amazing. So funny. This card, you could pretty much put this card in every single deck that you play, and it'd be useful. Like... Even in Zulok, or even in really hard aggro decks, this card would still be useful, because you can copy anything with it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. <laughs> um, and actually, I disenchant most of my epics because they you get a lot for them. But the, the, the third epic that I have for neutral is the Mountain Giant. Um, cost one less for each card in your hand. This card is pretty much only used in handlock, and I will explain why. Because handlock usually, for the first three or four turns, they don't play anything because they want to get the Twilight Drake out on turn four. So this will be my by turn five, they will usually be able to play a Mountain Giant out of their hand, and it only costs like four or five mana. Um, uh, it's, it's a really situational mountain, but it's got a cool card art, I'll give it that, but it's very, very useful in specific decks. Okay, so let's talk about the epics that I don't have, which will definitely be more. Okay, the first one is the Hungry Crab. <laughs> this is, destroy a murloc in game, plus two, plus two. Um, so potentially you could have a one mana... 3-4 on turn 1. Okay, so the dream scenario for this card is you're playing against a Warlock that just happens to be a Murloc Warlock and he goes first he plays a Murloc turn 1 you go second, you play your Hungry Crab turn 1. You're like oh, what, what? Hungry Crab is actually useful, what? Otherwise this card it's like Okay, it's a 1-2 for 1. Well, if you if you really, really want a 1-2 for 1, well, guess what? You can get a Goldshire Footman. And it has Taunt. <laughs> and he's got a beard. So, I don't know. Hungry Crab, no. I disenchanted mine. I got a golden one, disenchanted it, got 400 dust for it. Um, it's only... I mean, you can even destroy one of your own Murlocs. That's kind of a strategy. It's just a very specific card to where it's specific to only one type of deck. Um, so yeah, you should be wary of that. Doomsayer. This card's interesting. I wish it wouldn't do that. Okay. This card's interesting. At the start of your turn, destroy all minions. Late game board clear? Yes. Late game save yourself? Yes. Because what will happen is you'll play a Doomsayer, say, turns 5 or 6. The board will pre be pretty filled with minions. The enemy is like, oh crap, I have four minions out on the field. If I don't destroy the Doomsayer, all my minions die next turn. But, if I want to save all my minions, that means I have to throw all of my minions into this creature that has seven health. 
which means the opponent does not attack you directly, which means you live longer. The Doomsayer, um, another kind of specific class card, but he's not bad. And, and then on that page, and on that page, the Blood Knight. This card is gaining popularity very fast. Very, very fast. Mainly because people run Argent Squire, Scarlet Crusader, and Argent Commander. I'd probably say 50 to 75% of every deck right now has an Argent Squire. Probably 50 to 75% of every deck has an Argent Commander. And probably 40 to 50% of every deck has a Scarlet C Crusader. Um, so the dream with this card, the opponent plays two Argent Squires, maybe you even play a couple Argent Squires by turn three. You play this card, they all get destroyed, and you have a 12-12? Wait, 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 let me do the math. What's four times three? Math is hard. Four times three. Three, six, nine, twelve. Okay, so you'd have a 15-15 on turn three, which is like, holy crap. <laughs> Come at me, bro. So the Blood Knight, yeah, he's he's coming back in popularity. I don't know if you craft it though, it's up to you. Um, next page The Murloc War Leader. Um Okay, now it's not glitched out. All other Murlocs have plus two plus one. This card is extremely strong in Murloc decks and in Murloc decks only. Um yeah, I mean, it It completely, like, I've lost turn four. Honestly, I've lost on turn four to a Murloc deck because I didn't have an answer to his early Murloc rush. Um, it's just a um, rare thing that you see every now and then. You'll just see a, a, a Warlock deck that just throws Murlocs on the field, and you're like, oh, crap, how do I counter this? But, I mean, if you kill his Murlocs, then you'll basically win the game, but this card is really strong for other Murlocs. On the South Sea Captain, um, this card is so situational that it actually is very bad. This card is this card is bad because the only other pirates that are good is the what's what's what are they called? I know one's the South Sea Deckhand, and he is really not even that good. The Blood Cell Raider is like the only good pirate um, because turn two, turn three, you can have a 3-3 three, three and up, or you can combo this off Gorehal, have a 9-3 for 2, like what is this? Um, yeah, the South Sea Deckhand is actually really good if you are playing a character with a weapon, um, because the South Sea Deckhand is basically a Bluegill Warrior for one less mana, as long as you have a um, weapon equipped. But yeah, um, this card is bad because there's only like 4 pirates and only one is really good and this card's bad because it's a three for three three it's not even like a three for four three or a three for three four four um but i mean i guess if you get this card out with other pirates you'd have a pretty strong board um this is looking like all of the epics i guess there's not that many epics this is a shorter video um the sea giant Cost one less mana for each other minion on the battlefield. You don't ever see this card. I had it for a little bit, then I disenchanted it because I stopped using it. Because I got better cards. Um, I've thought about this. I think this card would be good maybe in aggro decks. Mainly because by turn 4 or 5, you'll have like 3 to 5 minions on the battlefield. And your opponent may have some. You could play this card out of your hand, turn 4 or 5. Um, and it'd be a pretty big threat. But other than that, it's really not that great. It is outclassed by the other two giants. The Molten Giant, um, 20 mana for an 8-8. Costs one less for each damage your hero has taken. Now, this is obviously broken if you're below 15 health. And usually, people wait to play this until it's free. Say you're 10, 10 or less health, you get to play this for free. This card is um, predominantly in handlock because they, they, I don't know, they'll take a lot of damage and they'll just put up like three eight eight taunts and you were like, well, damn, you only have eight health, I can't kill you now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, expect this from handlocks turn five or six. They'll play two molten giants and then defender, and you'll be like f and then concede. 
Um, so yeah. Now I think I'm forgetting one pirate. It is. It's the bird. It's the pirate bird. I don't know how you get it. I don't know where it is. It's like a it's like a one man a bird. I'm not really sure. Um, I might find it and like overlay it over the video. I'm not really sure what it does either, but it is a pirate, and I think it is an epic. Um, but on that note, which ones should you craft? Um, no, well, depends. Are you running a murloc? Then yes. Um, Doomsayer, I wouldn't say craft this. I don't know unless you unless the deck list that you long to use forever requires a doomsayer then I probably would never craft that um, well not no house what else is there big game hunter right now people only use one so if you have one you're good so maybe craft it maybe craft blood knight too blood knight's really good uh, big game hunter's really good um, murloc war leader's really good if you're doing murloc other than that no See, south sea captain kind of sucks He's kind of cool looking. He looks like a pig with horns. I'm not really sure. And of course, faceless, faceless, you need two of these as soon as possible. So maybe this is the only craft epic ASAP out of the neutral cards. And then you just have three giants. I would say only craft the giants if you're trying to make a handlock deck, pretty much. Um, but yeah. That is it for this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.